Hello, everybody, it's me, Sam Pugh of Whooper Gaming, and today we are, well, into episode 6 of our bucket buying tutorial. And this will be a sort of review and uh, error fixing of the past 5 tutorials. Um, so, the past 5 tutorials, we developed our plugin and we got it to a good working state. Um, but now I'm just going to go over some sort of uh, little finer details and things we can improve on upon and certain things that we maybe could have done better um, as a result. Um, so the cool computer geek, I, I will just put a shout out for him because he gave us uh, most of these little pointers and things and I'm just going to go over uh, a few of them and explain why um, you know why we change things. Okay so the first thing is that we don't actually have to define a logger so we can actually remove this and in, instead of just um, having this superheat.log we can just use the actual just get logger dot info. So get logger dot well, info, or we can just do log, I guess, and then the level and the string. So this will be exactly the same um, as our well, the the line above it does exactly the same above. Um, we just don't have to define the logger because this is already um, inherited from the Java plugin class, which this superheat class extends. So it just saves us a little tiny bit of a uh, code in there. Um, it's just always good because then you don't have to manually do it um, and then there's no sort of no chance of it being removed in a later version and that sort of thing um, so that's always good um, secondly you'll notice uh, in our superheat listeners we have a lot of if and whatnot we can sort of um, condense this down I guess um, so what we can do here is just sort of have it as one big if statement. So, if the uh, this is uh, true, or this is true. So these two lines here mean a logical or statement. Um, so basically means if either of them are true, then it will return. So we can just sort of add all our if statements together. And I will just, oops, if I just go with that, I did it move too much. Okay, and I'll just link them all together. So if any of these are, are true, then it will return. So if the player doesn't have permission, or the player doesn't isn't in the group, or the player doesn't have a thing, then it will return. It's just a nice way to group it, I guess. And we could do the same thing here, but. I won't go over um, that because that's exactly the same and that just wastes time. Okay, also this is a very, uh, a much bigger one I guess, is uh, we shouldn't really have a list of players. Um, it's just not recommended because players are quite a large object. Um, there's a lot of things uh, containing lots of player information, so things like potion effects, uh, the breath, the XP, the location, all of this uh, is in this sort of player object. Um, so when we sort of load and unload plugins and stuff, uh, we can't do this because these players still exist in this list. So if we like unload a world using multiverse, then it's very difficult to to, to do so. So it's really uh, quite bad practice, I guess, to use player instances. So instead of player, we're just going to use the string, and we're just going to use the uh, the name, I guess, or the display name of a player. So it does mean we have to change this here. So instead of add p, we're just going to do add p dot get display name, and we're just going to change the remove. Obviously, we'll have to also be a string, and this must be a string too. And then on our list as well, we can see here we have to add our player dot display name, player dot display name, and so on. Okay. So what we just changed there is just literally just changed our uh, array list from players to strings, and the strings are display names. So that way it's much easier, I guess, to um, toggle. Well, you, the string is much less uh, server dependent, and obviously now you can upload worlds much easier. It's, it's going to be a lot smaller as well, so that's always good. Okay, so. That's what we have to do now. Instead of just using the player object, we're using the actual string. And that will be unique for each player, so that's fine. Okay, uh, we could also have a constructor for this listener. 
So, for instance, let's call public superheat listener, and we'll take superheat h. Uh, this dot main is h. Let's define a private superheat main, and we might as well make that final. Okay, so now we've added a uh, constructor um, so we can pass things from the plugin instead of having the static instance. So let's just remove that because I, I, I do do that sometimes, but let's just, just show you you don't actually need that static instance here. So we're going to remove that entirely. And now in the constructor, so before we just had uh, the no argument uh, constructor of superheat listener, but now we're going to have the argument of superheat, so we're going to have this here. And then that will send that to the here. Okay. So now instead of doing this thing here where we get the instance, the static instance, and then get in the uh, superheat users, um, this uh, array list here, we can literally just do main dot superheat users contains, and we can change that all our superheat instances to just main as a result. Okay, so now you can pass things from this plugin directly to superheat listener without all the staticness of it, all the, the static variables. So we just remove that entirely um, just there. So now we can, if we want to use um, instances and methods from this, we can just call, well, main and then whatever we, we need. Maybe not, maybe in a function, main dot, and then we can like use curl we can get the config, we can do all that sort of stuff. We could do that with the static one as well, and that will work fine, but we'll just, this is a, a better way of doing it, I guess. Okay, uh, so that's that. What also we can do is on the command. So here we have command of get name equals ignore case superheat, uh, but we can actually do, just get the label. The label here, this bit here, is actually the, the label they put in, so the slash superheat. So we can just do label but equals ignore case and then the thing. So we don't have to do that. We could do it from command like we did, but it's just easier and quicker, I guess. Might need just to do the label because we've already given the string here. We might as well use it. Okay. Okay, so that's that, I believe, in that section. Uh, if the target is no, I think that's okay. Also, we can change our uh, array list to just a list, and we have to import that. Uh, there we go. Um, that's just a small little finer uh, pick that just means we don't have to really attach what certain list we have to use. Uh, that's just a very small thing. Just the fact that now we can use any uh, thing that has a uh, extends list, so array list for instance, we can now use, or if we wanted to change it later, we can use something else. Okay. Um, okay, and now the last thing. So you remember in the last tutorial, uh, our inventory removing the code didn't actually work at all. Um, that is because there is a problem in craft bucket and it's very buggy um, but that, I'm just going to show you the actual true way if you never uh, well, if you didn't saw it yourself event.getPlayer it's very similar to what we already have .getInventory .remove and now we want to create a new uh, array of item stack so item stack array and then in that array we have new item stack and then material one and there we go. Well, I should say remove item, not remove. Okay, and that will uh, work much better than our previous one. So it, this is exactly the same um, as what we had before. I said now we have a sort of array of item stacks, not just the actual individual item stack. And as a result, it should remove it from the inventory. Okay, um, I believe that is everything, or the majority, 
Uh, I think there is a way you can actually have the event that is cancelled in the event handler. So the way you would do that is instead of having this bit here, if event is cancelled return, in the event handler we can just add ignore cancelled equals true. And that will do, have I spell it right? Cancelled equals true. And that does exactly the same thing as our two lines of code here. Um, but if the, uh, the event has been cancelled, then it will just ignore it and not bother. So that's uh, just a neater way and saves you a couple of lines of code in order to do that. And yeah, so that's uh, the main sort of thing. Uh, let's check out this. That's fine. I believe. I don't think there was anything else. But yeah, so that's that. I'm not sure this okay. No, that's all fine, I think. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, hopefully, we've gone over uh, a few of the bugs and just a few the minor details, I guess, uh, if you really want to know what's going on. Um, a plugin obviously worked before, um, but if you're interested in the, the depths of this and whatnot, then hopefully, I've just gone over that quickly. I have a few things you can do to uh, improve your code. Um, I did see someone in the comments the last one says something about databases so maybe I'll go over SQL I had to MySQL or MySQL I should say I always pronounce that wrong maybe I'll go over to Joel and how you can implement that into your plugin okay so thanks for watching this has been me Sam from Gaming signing out